Hi loves! So today is finally my July favorites and this is freaking me out man. I'm not a fan of the fact that this year is like over halfway over, way over halfway over now. But as always I have some favorites from this month to share with you guys and I'm going to be combining beauty and lifestyle in this video. So yeah I hope you guys are excited. This is going to be a long one because I played with makeup a lot this month. It was a great month for experimenting with makeup and I will say that I stopped doing my hair nearly as much and I know that this is this is kind of a tangent. But I stopped doing my hair nearly as much, um, and there are two reasons. I'm going to tell you about one of them in a minute, but the first one is just because it's so freaking hot. This is the first time I've curled my hair in a solid, like, three weeks, I think. And I've partially been able to get away with it because my hair has been in such great condition recently due to a favorite of the month that I wanted to share with you guys. I've been taking new supplements, and I tend to switch out. Um, sometimes I will try things at the drugstore, sometimes I'll try things online, but I don't really ever mention anything unless it's worth my time and unless it's worth your time time because I know a lot of you are only curious about the ones that work. Like you don't want me to go through every single bottle I've ever tried and be like, okay, well this one sucked, this one sucked, this one sucked. This one was like $30 and it sucked. Hair Burst is a dietary supplement that promotes the growth of hair and it promotes stronger nails. I am wearing falsies, falsies, uh, fake nails right now, but I have noticed a good amount of more strength in my nails. I have very, very brittle and short and just crap nails. And so whenever I take something that makes them a little bit stronger, that's always an added plus. But if you can see the amount of root I I have here and yes my hair is so freaking dark every time that I get more root I'm always like do I have black hair I just kind of feel like my roots have been coming in at an extreme pace and my hair already grows pretty quickly my hair has been growing it's been great um, and honestly I love long hair I would love to have hair down to my butt if that was socially acceptable which it is I'm going to be a mermaid for the rest of my life but basically these are one of my favorites they have collagen biotin and silica vitamins a B C and D folic and pantothenic acids. I don't know if I pronounced that word right, but there's a lot in here that is just generally really great for you and great for like beauty and that kind of stuff. Using a vitamin like this um, that does have like biotin and all of those great ingredients really can help your hair grow faster. So that's why it is encouraged to take something like this for hair and nails. What sets this one apart is that it is made specifically for people who want to grow their hair longer. So the formula of vitamins and everything in here is specially created for people who want stronger and longer and shinier and just nicer hair. A lot of people say not only does their hair grow faster, it also is shinier and healthier and just feels better. One thing I will say is I shed like a mother and I haven't noticed my hair coming out of my scalp nearly as much. When you brush through your hair, you're going to get dead hair coming out. Like there's no way to avoid that. But what really has changed for me is the amount of hair being pulled out of the scalp. I feel like it's a little bit stronger right up here and it's just not coming out as easily. So less shedding, it's growing longer and stronger and quicker and I love it. So it is my first favorite of the month and I do have a promo code for you guys because you guys know I love to get you the hookup. I'm going to write it out right here as well as list it down below for you guys if you want to go and get a bottle of hair burst. So I recommend it. So far I love it. So far I do feel like my roots are going in faster and my hair just feels better in general. So that is my first favorite of the month and now I'm going to get into some makeup. Okay so the first favorite that I have is the Lorac Pro Contour Kit and I can't remember for the life of me if I mentioned this last month as well but I haven't been using it as much as I did in the month of June. I still really like it though and I still think it's worth a mention. This is the only contour kit I have ever tried that I actually like. I feel like the colors are a little bit warmer but they're not like super warm. They're not like orangey or anything like that. I just feel like they really better suit my skin tone. I also love the consistency of the powders. When I put powder on my face, I like to be really finely milled and I also really like it to get the job done with like a tiny bit of product because I am dry. And these just do that for me. So I really love this and I am just really happy with it. I will probably never buy another contour kit because I just don't need one. Almost every time that I do my makeup, I have been using this It Cosmetics Vitality Glow Anti-Aging Matte Bronzer, and I was sent this by It Cosmetics. That was another huge favorite this month. I won the It Cosmetics It Girl contest, and I am so thrilled. Thank you guys so much for all you do in general, but thank you, like, beyond thank you for helping me get to this place in the um, It Girl contest. I can't believe I won. I'm so excited. But It Cosmetics actually sent me a ton of products when we um, were, like, making the videos for the contest, and one of them was the this bronzer. I just feel like this bronzer, at least with the brush, and I'm going to talk about that too, that I use, goes onto the skin like it's like 
airbrushing. It is so, so, so light. It's also finely milled and it blends like it's nothing. So I'm obsessed with this. Honestly, I thought that my NYC Smooth Skin Bronzer was like heaven and I still really like this, but this bronzer takes the cake. It's a little bit more neutral and not as orangey. And while it is definitely pigmented, it's just not as stark or in your face. So I absolutely love this. I highly recommend it if any of you are looking for a new high-end item to splurge on. All right, so sticking with face products, I have not one but two Becca Cosmetics things to show you. The first one you saw coming from a mile away, I'm sure, and it is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Champagne Pop. And who made this? Jaclyn Hill. And I absolutely love it. I actually have it on the tops of the cheekbones today. Some people were saying that this really emphasizes pores, and I honestly feel like most highlighters kind of do, but I don't have enlarged pores, so I don't feel like it like highlights um, bad skin on me. I don't feel like it really, if I bring it too low, highlights like my acne scars or any dry skin that I have. I just think it's a beautiful highlight, and when I first saw it, I was really, really, really scared of it. I thought it was a little bit dark and a little bit gold, but honestly, now that I've used it as much as I have, I just feel like it looks really great, especially when I have a tan. I'm not gonna lie, I've also been using it as an eyeshadow a lot. Um, like on the eyelid. It's it's beautiful and it's very multi-purpose. I said I'll never go to anything else. Probably will, but I really love that right now. The other Becca Cosmetics favorite that I have is this blush and it's in the shade Songbird and I wore this a ridiculous amount this month. My only thing with this blush is that I can't apply it with my normal blush brush. It's just too much and I don't know why, but I feel like when I apply it with my typical like more stiff blush brush. It just catches on to like dry skin and stuff like that. The blush itself I will talk about before we move into the next product that I use in correlation with this. The blush itself is just a really pretty orangey terracotta peach and it really is so beautiful. It looks gorgeous with a tan. It looks gorgeous when I'm pale. I'm obsessed with it. I use it a lot when I don't want to put on an additional bronzer, but I want to look a little bit glowy. However, I have been applying it with this It Cosmetics French Boutique Boutique brush, and the reason I love this is because it is very feathery to the touch, and I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, if I press this, the bristles do what I want them to do. They sort of glide over the skin. Now, it does have some sort of stiffness to it in the sense that, like, I can't, like, sham it, you know, back into the head of the brush without completely ruining it, but it just barely glides over the skin and applies product like it's nothing, and it's beautiful. I love it so much. Actually, I'll go ahead and talk about um, the brush that I'm using a lot for bronzer right now is also the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Airbrush airbrush powder and bronzer brush. I just like the way that this fits right along the side of my face because it does have a nice edge to it but at the same time like I can really blend things out because it is just like a giant kabuki on a stick. So I've been using this a ton for almost everything in my makeup routine for blending, for putting on bronzer, for everything you could think of. So honestly I have a lot of IT Cosmetics brushes now and they are my favorite of all time. We'll finish off the face products and then get into what I loved in terms of eyes this month. I know there's a lot of IT cosmetics products in this video, but it's just because I had the opportunity to try a ton. It's not sponsored by them. They're not asking me to put this stuff in the video. I just really love it. This is the IT Cosmetics, um, what do they even call this? This is like a duo concealer and brightener. So basically you, you have the brightener on one end and the, um, concealer on this end. You have the Hello Light Brightener, and this is a really nice, like, yellowy, highlight color that just kind of tends to brighten up dark circles. It's very, very, very thin. It just sort of neutralizes everything and gives you a nice base to work with. And what I'll do is I'll just like put that right under my dark circles and on top of the lid. And then I will go in with the Bye Bye Under Eye. I will say it's really thick. Like I wash my uh, sponge, this isn't a beauty blender, but I wash my sponge before I put it on today. And honestly, you wind up wasting a lot of product because it is really thick and so it gets all up in that sponge and the washout process is like a pain in the neck unless you do it immediately after you apply it. Sorry, I have to readjust this shirt every couple of minutes because I move and it just goes back up and on the shoulders instead of off where it belongs. I love this top. It's from Boohoo. It's probably uh, listed and linked down below if I can find it, but it just like tends to ride up really easily. Anyways, this product is thick but it blends really easily and it makes you look like you never had dark circles. It feels like velvet to the touch. It lasts all day. It never catches on fine lines. And it's weird because I feel like people didn't have the nicest things to say about Bye Bye Under Eye, but I love it. Not gonna lie to you guys, I maybe wore foundation mm, like 
will also count like it cosmetic CC cream because I consider that to be a foundation it's pretty like thick in its consistency and it's really full coverage I wore foundation three times this month tops every other day I was wearing the dream fresh BB cream from Maybelline and I was not expecting to like this I've had it in my collection for a while I used it like once didn't love it put it back my thing with this is it does have SPF 30 which is really nice and it also does give a little baby bit of coverage. If you have active acne, it's not enough. And I say that not because I think that people with like really active acne need more coverage, but because it literally glides right over and it doesn't do anything for acne. However, if you have acne scars, if you have hyperpigmentation, this does wonders at just making it look a little bit more airbrushed and a little bit more seamless. It's also moisturizing to take the place of my daily moisturizer, which is really nice and saves a step in my like everyday routine. I have mine in the shade light medium and when I I'm like pale like pale pale um this is about enough for me a little bit dark but it's enough so next time I'll just go with like light because if I'm not like wearing fake tan I'm pretty pretty white let's talk about the eyeballs shall we I really loved not one but two eyeshadow palettes that are extremely uh, well, not too similar. I feel like they're really similar. I use them in the same ways. The first one I'm wearing on the eyes today, and it is the Battle Lash for Saucebox palette. Uh, this month was really cool because Samantha from Battle Lash actually followed me on Twitter, and I thought I was going to literally, like, fall over. I thought I was just going to pass out. I actually googled a picture of a surprise lizard and sent it to her because that was my face. I was just like, I didn't buy this palette because she followed me on Twitter, by the way, although that is a totally acceptable reason to do it. Um, I bought this a little bit before that, but anyways, I really wanted this, and it was because Samantha said on Twitter they were, like, running out that I decided to go out and pick it up. This palette is outstanding. Saucebox is probably out of stock by the time that I'm showing this, and that's why I haven't done any tutorials with this. I have it on my eyes today. I use this purple under the lower lash line. I use this beautiful copper all over the lid. These shadows are buttery beyond anything in your wildest dreams. They're so pigmented, so beautiful. And though this is primarily a warm tone palette, you know, you do have a few pops of color here and there. That blue did not like get enough justice I don't think that I did enough of a swatch for that because I've used that on the eyes and it's gorge but I really really like this one I do feel like it was super expensive but you get so much product in here and I think that it's worth it in that aspect I paid $60 but you do get eight shadows and they are the size of makeup forever shadows so what is that eight into 60 someone's probably gonna yell at me I'm probably wrong for this but I think that's like just under eight dollars of tax I hope um which means they're a lot less expensive than makeup forever shadows you get a crap ton of product and they're just great so Highly recommend Saucebox in general if this is how all of their shadows are because seriously, I'm obsessed. Then I got something that I really wanted to talk about in this favorites video, but I have a lot, um, not negative things to say, but I just don't think it's as good as everyone says. It's the Visart Neutral Matte 01 palette, and these finally came back in stock on Sephora. Basically, this is a French brand, I believe, and you just get an array of completely matte shadows in here. I heard about these through my friend Tara from Tara Babies. Love her. I'll list her down below if you want to go and check her out. When I saw this, I was like, oh, warm matte colors. I totally want this because it's a little bit different than, like, the Kat Von D shade and light palette or something like that. It's just different, and I wanted to try it out. But... I just don't feel like they're as pigmented as they should be because this is an $80 palette. Yes, it is an $80 eyeshadow palette. And I just don't, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Like, they're definitely pigmented and they're beautiful and I like them. There's nothing wrong with them. But I just don't feel like the wow factor is there. Maybe I'm not, like, cool enough to understand. I don't know, that's the swatches right there. I. I don't know. I probably, if I could go back, would not spend the money on this palette. I would just get Kat Von D Shade and Light. Or better yet, the Too Faced Natural Matte is amazing. But I just wanted to throw it in here to let you know. I don't think it's worth the hype. I will continue to use it because it was 80 bucks. Now, that being said, if you are someone with dry, really textured eyelids, my friend Tara, the one who I heard about it from, said that these are the best matte shadows she could possibly ask for. And maybe that's why I don't like them because I have no eyelid issues. I can use any type of shadow and it doesn't matter. If you're someone with dry eyelids, maybe this would be good because they are really nice and creamy, but they're also thin in consistency. So yeah, that's my little spiel on that. I'm finally going to move on to my last product for, uh, is this the last product for beauty? No, it is the last product for eyes though. This is the It Cosmetics Hello Lashes Mascara. I don't really love this on its own, like, TBH, but 
I really like it with other mascaras. This is like my holy grail mascara saver, if you will. If I go in and I'm heavy handed with my mascara, I go in with this second and it just gets every clump out, makes my lashes look separated while still being full and make sure that I have no like crappy clumps or anything like that. I love this. I will probably repurchase this because I think it just goes with every sort of volumizing mascara I could ever want to use it with. The thing I like about it is it does separate while not taking away from the volume, which is something I find a lot of like lengthening mascaras can do when you combine them with a volumizing mascara. It's just a holy grail. I love it and I have been using it a lot. So I have one lip favorite to show you guys this month and I know like lips are normally like my jam, but this month I only have one. It kind of has coffee on it and I don't have a paper towel in here so bear with me but it is the L'Oreal um what are these called they're the little like lip glosses I don't know what these are called but this one is in the shade 601 nude ballet this is in limited edition Lily Pulitzer for target packaging but I think that this color is completely permanent. It is just a really nice lip gloss and it's nice and opaque too. I've been using it over a lot recently. This is just a really beautiful nudie color that goes over everything and just makes it glossy. It's also a very hydrating formula, which is great when you have dry lips like yours truly. Since it is thick, it's also sticky. And if you don't like that, you will not like this, but if you don't mind a slightly stickier gloss, this is the bomb.com. My scent of the month was totally coconut lime breeze from Bath and Body Works and I know it looks like I haven't used this but I've been using it almost every single day I pair it with every single one of my summer perfumes it just smells so good if you were a coconut lime verbena fan it took me a really long time to bite the bullet and just buy this because I finally had to accept that coconut lime verbena was not coming out this is a little bit more coconut than coconut lime verbena it doesn't have that like verbena kick but it does still have the lime undertones and it's really pretty and summery I don't love the body splashes from Bath and Body Works I much prefer their actual like body sprays because I just feel like these fade fast but I still really like this and I like the scent of it a lot so talking about fashion, my fashion favorite of the month, and I only have one to show you, mostly because I've been moving a lot this month. Not actually moving, because I'm still here. The move officially begins like right as you're watching this though, which is kind of scary to think about. Um, so I didn't do a whole lot of like makeup and clothes and stuff. I did most of it last month. However, I had a few river days where we were out, my friends and I just like hanging out, exploring and doing the things. And I wore this bikini a lot. I well, and I say a lot, but I would say like four times. And that's a lot for one bikini, at least for me. It's one from American Eagle and it has just like really cute plaid high-waisted shorts and a plaid bandeau top and I think it's super 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 cute I wore the strap with this just because I like the straps I have a very small chest in fact I think I've touched on this but I've lost weight in my chest recently which means I've gone down a cup size and it blows like bandos and I do not get along unless they have some sort of strap so this was definitely my favorite bikini of the month and I really 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 liked it other than that though I mean I know that I've been talking about bikinis a lot I guess like some people have said some jokingly some not so much that this has become like a bikini channel um but honestly I do things that require me to be in a bathing suit. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't have too many lifestyle favorites this month. I have a book, I have a movie, and is that it? I think that's it. The movie is based off of the book and it is Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz and my mom loves Dean Koontz. Um, I couldn't really get into his writing style when I was younger. I He was too smart for me like to be perfectly honest with you but I really enjoy his audiobooks um, especially when I'm in the car because I feel like they aren't slow paced like there's there's not always like action but there's just something going on all the time like I can't listen to a lot of audiobooks where like it's really slow paced and it's like a love story or something because I'm just like girl I'm gonna fall asleep to that so I listen to the audiobook because I watched the movie first which kind of kind of ruins everything but I really love the movie it's on Netflix and if you want the audiobook I do have a link for audible it is audibletrial.com slash Loewy so this month I am recommending Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz one of my current favorite things in the entire world and I think you guys will probably really really like it and I believe that's all I'm trying to think and I feel like I must have like forgotten something somewhere but that is it for now my poor little brain cannot take any more favorites apparently July was one of the best and worst months of my life in so many ways and I just want to reflect on that for a minute in the start of July um, we had a video go viral and I said this in last month too that basically at the end of June start of July I had a video go viral I got to talk to people magazine and the Today Show and 
all of these crazy, crazy like um, media sources who were really interested in what I had to say. I got to see myself in People magazine. I submitted like all of these professional shots I'd had done of me before for the magazine article in People and they chose this iPhone photo of me that was so genuinely me and so natural and they left everything in. You can still see my rolls on my stomach and it's so real and so genuine and it's hit me really hard that that happened and that I could be a part of that and it makes me feel really 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 good. But that brought a lot of negativity. I've had to leave comments on approval for a while now um, and I, I can honestly say at first it was really hard because I felt a lot of pressure to approve everything and I don't know now it's just become really second nature to me to reply to the nice comments and it's made me like appreciate the nice ones so much more and to just block the negativity before it even like becomes a part of the video in any way shape or form. It started out as like a negative and then that became a positive too. I won the It Cosmetics Vote It Girl contest. That's crazy. It has been the craziest month in so many ways. Right when you're watching this I'm gearing up to go somewhere very special and I will reveal that pretty soon. Um, and I know it's one of those things where it's like annoying and I'm like, oh, you don't get to know. But you will see very, very, very soon, like in a day or two, if you stay tuned to my Instagram. Um, and maybe I'll see some of you guys while I am in this place. So I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you for everything that you do for me. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next video. If you did like this one, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, I will see you very soon, like I already said. Bye.